Hey, babe, what you doing? Oh, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I'm putting a Band-Aid on Big Blue because, unfortunately, Big Blue got in its first accident. And uh, as you can see right here, and, you know, sometimes, you know, Band-Aids make things, you know, feel better and bring comfort and uh, help stop the pain. So I, I figure Band-Aid would be a good thing to, to put you there you go, it's gonna be okay. We, you're a champ. You get, you're gonna get through this, okay? The pain won't last forever. So many of you may have remembered when Chris and I took Big Blue and we went down to Myrtle Beach. Um, that we had had some issues and we made the video the good the bad and the ugly based on the issues That we had with Big Blue. We had a slide out issue it took us an hour to get the slide out when we got there and uh, Which we were glad it, it went out But then we had to call RV rescue to come out because it would not come back in and So he overrode the module and brought it back in so we camped the rest of that week uh, with it in yada 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 right so when we got back here uh, to North Carolina um, we decided that we needed to take it in for it to get looked at and the closest place to us is not our dealer which our dealers in Knoxville Tennessee um, Camping World is not too far from us like 20 minutes up up the road so we took it over to Camping World to drop off Big Blue for them to look at the slide out and we had some wood trim issues and um, just some little stuff. Um, our cutest entry wasn't working, things like that. Um, so we drop it off there, um, which the camping world, like, you know, I think your biggest fear whenever you go to a camping world or any place to drop off your coach is, man, are they gonna bump into something? How tight is the parking lot? It, how many times is it gonna get moved till they can get it in the shop? You know, that, that's things that go through my head when I drop it off and um, very tight parking over there. What did you think of the parking? Oh, extremely tight. I mean, we had to pull in. We were between, in literally in the parking lot between parked cars and other RVs. And um, yeah, it made us a little bit nervous. Yeah, um, as a matter of fact, I set it up. Chris goes, why did you set up our appointment so early in the morning? Well, I kind of did that on purpose because I knew that the parking lot would be fairly empty. And it was a good thing we did because when we went back later, you couldn't even, two cars couldn't even pass. So we'd have never got through with the fifth wheel. Um, but we dropped it off, got the paperwork signed. They said, hey, we'll call you later in the afternoon once the guys have had a chance to look at it. Um, we're like, fine. So we dropped it off for a couple hours. And then uh, of course you, I get the phone call and I told Chris, I said, well, this is our call. You know, they're calling, come pick it up, you know? Uh, so we get the call and, and he goes, well, I got good news and bad news. And of course, you don't want to hear that, right? So I said, well, let's do the good news first. He said, well, the good news is, uh, he said, we looked at it. Our techs got the parts, you know, on order. We'll get the ball rolling. They put some batteries in our keyless entry, you know, that kind of stuff. He said, so we got that rolling. Um, he said, but the bad news is a customer ran into your camper. And oh, both Chris and I's hearts just sank like what oh, came over you oh my gosh yeah and they didn't yeah they didn't give us a whole lot of details they just said it was scratched so there was a part that where was it scratched was it scratched on the side the front the back the corner we didn't you know we didn't have any idea but we did know they told us that the um, couple that hit our car was there in the parking lot waiting for us so we got in the truck and headed over to camping world and so you're, it's like your worst fear <laughs> you're like that was one of my things like i hated leaving it there because you know is somebody else going to hit it or are their own guys you know they pick them up with those forklifts and they whiz them around the parking lot you know and you're just like that's my thing i was worried about i didn't want it getting hit here you know it wasn't them but it was a customer so chris and i go over there and we're just like can you believe it like of all the rotten luck you know and we're complaining a little bit to each other of course you know we like to take care of our stuff like like a lot of you do so it's just kind of a bummer to hear that you're going to have a bunch of scratches all over your RV, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I was thankful it was just scratches, or at least that's the way they made it sound, that it wasn't dented or a disaster. So that yeah. was a positive, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, I mean, and then when we got there, 
Um, he said, oh, it's not that bad, you know? So then you're going, okay, well, it's not that bad. Um, we get over to the service area where it was, and sure enough, I don't know, probably 20 feet away from us was uh, a travel up hole behind a bumper pole, probably 24 to 27 foot long, and it was connected to a dually, and that was the couple that hit us. And, and what had happened was, is they had an awning on the driver's side of the camper, which is really odd. I had never seen one on the driver's side and he was trying to maneuver in their tight parking lot and he thought he had the clearance and they had our fifth wheel outside up against a wall. Well, when he rounded the corner, that awning clipped the nose of our fifth wheel and just drug, you know, as he was passing the whole 27 feet was, you know, scraping on the nose of our fifth wheel and so first we looked at it before they got out of their vehicle and you know we're like okay well you know maybe six inches long and it looked like it had taken a chunk of the fiberglass out maybe on initial impact and then and then it was just a lot of scrape marks um on that corner in the nose and thankfully it was just on one color it wasn't across multiple colors which you know that makes it a little bit easier for uh, for the people that are fixing it yeah, and so the couple comes walking out, you know, that's in there, and the husband kind of comes up to me, and you know, and he says, "I'm so sorry." He was super apologetic. They were super nice couple. Super they felt nice really couple. Really bad. Yeah, then they, and of course, you know, put your put ourselves in their shoes. You know, if it would have been us, you know, oh, I mean, you just feel terrible. So they were both super apologetic, and um, they said, "Hey, we're gonna take care of this. We're legit." <laughs> My wife is a pastor. And Chris and I both start laughing because as many of you know, Chris and I are pastors here in North Carolina. So they were pastors and we thought, wow, what a coincidence uh, that, that she's a pastor and we're pastors. And so, you know, we struck up a nice conversation. So I'm getting ready to uh, roll the footage of us driving there because they really put my driving skills to the test guys when <laughs> we got there. I had to do a 360, turn into their little parking lot and uh, pull into their paint booth. And the guys were really impressed, so. He did a great job, one time. One time, and they said I was hired. I'm like, <laughs> how much does it pay? <laughs> so we'll roll that film for you guys. Harold, Camping World, who did the body work on Big Blue. <laughs> so explain to us what all you had to do to fix it up. Basically, it wasn't too bad. You know, just that corner had a little gouge in it. So I ground it down, did a little fiberglass work in that corner, a little polyester and a little uh, priming, and then just did a base coat clear coat on it. Nice. So how long did that take? How many hours? Friday, when you got it here, I jumped on it, got it covered first. I always cover everything before I get into it so it don't get so dusty. Uh, probably had an hour and a half in it then. 
maybe three. I did the painting this morning. So, so by by 10:30, I was done with the painting. On a scale of one to ten, what would you call that in the severity of the hits of the fiberglass? That wasn't bad. I mean, it was like a three, maybe. Oh, okay, like a three. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, it didn't have a severe impact, so it wasn't stress cracked. Uh, it was basically like a scab. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So it wasn't as bad as I thought. I didn't know how deep it was. It wasn't bad at all. It basically just knocked the corner of the gel coat. Okay, so Harold's going to explain to us fiberglass and gel coat. Fiberglass and gel coat. This is basically the gel coat, which is a fiberglass resin with a uh, mica in it. And that's what gives the outer skin of everything a smoothness. And then all of the fiberglass resin with the matting is what gives everything the strength. So ours didn't get down to the fiberglass? It basically, it basically scabbed off of that. It just basically knocked the, uh, the gel coat off of the fiberglass. So it was basically that one white area you had on there, basically was that right there with this knocked off. Oh, wow. Okay, that's, that's good to know. So that's what it looks like, everybody, mm -hmm. once it gets past your gel coat. And then right here is actually fiberglass, the matting, and then that's the layer of gel coat. So you can kind of see the step edge there. Yeah, wow. All right, so we are here with Eddie, who is the big kahuna, the big cheese. He runs this whole operation. <laughs> or, or or, do you not want to claim that? I don't want to claim that. <laughs> I'm proud of what we do, but I don't want to claim that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to give you a shout out, man, because we appreciate you guys and getting it in and getting it done so fast. And, Glad to do it. And uh, we're out of here. Drop it off on Friday, and we're taking off on a Monday. So. Yeah, they don't all want to they don't all good that way. <laughs> so I'm glad they did. We appreciate it, man. And uh, we'll definitely recommend you guys too to, to other campers. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs>so they have a body shop so Eddie came over from the body shop and gave us an estimate right away and while um, they were there and while we were there yeah so, so so I guess we were in the right place right at the right time you know for that to have had happened 
And you know what? We picked it up today, and it and it looks great. Just like brand just, new. Just like Big Blue is brand new. Yeah. Uh, we wiped the tears away, took the Band-Aid off, <laughs> and uh, she's ready to go camping. However, I should say, I should throw this in there too, though, that um, we still have to take it back to Camping World to have the warranty work done. So we'll be praying and crossing our fingers. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no accidents. <laughs> Next time goes a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, but I'd say our, our experience with Camping World, what would you say about that dealing with them? Right? Yeah, I think, you know, the customer service has been great. You know, they've been right on top of things. They're, you know, they got us in and out of the body shop real quick. Uh, we brought it in on a Friday and today is Monday. We were out um, and back, brought it back home today. So, you know, I think it's been a good, experience. I don't know that they necessarily um, have a lot of experience with our type of camper. I think they're more um, pull behind than, than fifth wheel or at least. Well, they have some Montanas, you know, there and some Montana high countries um, that are about our size, but they, they had said to us when they make the comment, we don't usually see campers like yours you know, the higher end camper come come in here. So that made us a little bit nervous because I was hoping that we wouldn't have to wait for, for parts if they had to get parts ordered and paint, you know, and just all that kind of stuff. But no, they got us, we dropped it off on a Friday and, and picked it up on a Monday and the guys were super nice. So we found it a bit ironic that we've been here in North Carolina. We moved here specifically to be a part of the church that we pastor. And what's funny is since we've been here, we haven't had the opportunity to meet any other pastors. And so we found it a bit ironic that it happened in a situation like this where we got into an accident um, and they're also fellow campers. So. Uh, we obviously have a little bit more in common than just pastoring churches, and hopefully we'll actually get to go camping together sometime. Yeah, that, that's what we said to do. We're like, we'll have to go camping and, and not run into each other. Yeah. <laughs> So we appreciate all of you for watching. We appreciate all of our subscribers. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun for us and, and, a, and a cool journey. So God bless. And safe travels.